Like 3D printers a few years ago, we're now seeing a glut of high quality consumer grade affordable laser cutters on the market. And just like with 3D printers, they started with tiny build areas and low powered lasers. And slowly we started to see larger format, higher powered, easier to use, more affordable, and more importantly, safer laser cutters. Two Trees seriously impressed me last year with its excellent budget beginner entry level model, the Totem S. And now they've just finished kickstarting for their latest machine, the TS3. I'm James Bruce, you're watching MUO Reviews, and I hope you join me as I test out the TS3 to find out if this is the laser engraver for you. So the TS3 adds some great new safety features like a fully uh, enclosed case with optional air filter or exhaust vent, as well as doubling the laser power to 10 watts. But it does have a few software quirks that I think make it perhaps unsuitable for a beginner. Keep on watching to find out. So starting with the out of the box construction, there isn't any. This is fully built uh, from a rival. You will just need to unpack it, get the bits out of, uh, they're all inside the machine here, pull those out and then fit the honeycomb grill into the machine. But that's pretty much it. I also needed to fix one of the end stops that was damaged during transit, but the support team were very helpful in identifying the issue and they had that fixed quickly. Ours shipped with an exhaust pipe, which is the best way to use this, um, but it also had a cotton filter. I did try with just the filter for a while, but then my house ended up stinking of burnt wood. No filter system is ever going to be that effective. Obviously it's better than not having anything at all, but the main problem with the filter on this is that when you're using it, the fans are actually reversed. So air is pulled into the enclosure and in my testing, it seemed to be leaking out of the base of the machine. So it was pulling air in and then pushing it all out. So you could see the smoke actually coming out. I mean, I don't really see how it would work given that the filter, uh, there's a big metal panel on the back and there's no instructions to remove that or anything, but suffice to say the filter is pretty useless and you would need to replace it every few months anyway. So it's, it's just an ongoing consumable cost that you don't need. If instead you opt for the exhaust pipe, which I would highly recommend, uh, there's a tiny bit of fitting that you need to do around the back. You need to take the fans out and reverse them if you go that route, but it's nothing complicated at all, really. I should just make it clear that if you've backed the Kickstarter, you'll get both a starter filter and the exhaust system. But for anyone ordering after the Kickstarter, you'll just get the superior exhaust system. And I don't think that's a big deal given how frankly useless the filter is. So once I'd fitted the exhaust, I just jammed it out of the window and it completely eliminated any smoke uh, and nearly all odors. It was a world of difference compared to open designs or even trying to use the filter on this. And I think that feature alone makes it well worthwhile for beginners. As I said, it isn't entirely beginner friendly in other areas, but if safety and smell is your overriding factor with a choice between this or perhaps an easier to use uh, bare system, I would be inclined to go with this. There are other quirks, but we'll talk about those in a moment. So the TS3 also features Wi-Fi, though it's quite temperamental. It only works with 2.4G networks. I had to create a new one uh, just to test this. And even then I needed to change it to use a very simple password. It didn't like my original password, which, you know, had an exclamation mark in it. Moreover, the only purpose seems to be to connect it to a smartphone app which hasn't been updated in four years and seems kind of pointless. It does give you the ability to remote control it, but no more so than you already have from the control panel on the machine. And I don't really think you should be remote controlling a potential fire hazard. Anyway, the app also allows you to scribble designs and then burn them straight onto the wood, but, but basically it's not really worth the effort. Just forget about the Wi-Fi. Okay, so let's get on to the specs of the TS3 and actually using it. Uh, like I said, it's a 10 watt laser, although obviously I have no way to prove that other than to say in my testing, it managed to cut the same thickness acrylic as I tested with before, but in half the number of cuts. So while the five watt laser took 100% power, 100 millimeters per minute with five or six passes, this did it comfortably in three passes. So I do think the laser power is accurate. Before we get to that though, I wanted to mention the software quirks. 
See, while most laser cutters work with X, Y, zeroed in the bottom left, this uses the top left, which means that going down or this way is actually a negative Y axis movement. Now, setting this up in Lightburn was a bit of a nightmare. So I'm going to explain how I did it uh, in case you need to do the same thing. Basically, you press H home on the machine, then you connect it in Lightburn. Your output should be set as such uh, top left and then manually move the printer down uh, to the bottom left and set it in light burners. That's the origin. The only other thing to remember is that you should invert the Y axis for anything where it matters, uh, where you've got text, for example. Otherwise, it'll come out back to front. And if you're thinking that all sounds like a bit of a faff, then you're right. And it's entirely possible I'm missing some critical setting. And if I am, uh, please go ahead and help me out in the comments. I've tried a variety of settings. I've looked up how to invert the axis. Um, and this is the only way I found that doesn't actually trigger a soft out of bounds error. So anyway, then you need to position your material in the TS3. So up to a certain height, you can use the built-in honeycomb plate, but anything thicker than about 10 millimeters, you need to remove that plate and possibly bring it up on small blocks and then manually focus the laser either into the middle of the material for a cut or onto the surface for an engrave. The enclosed nature of the machine means you are, of course, more limited in material size compared to an open design where you can actually burn something much bigger than normal and then do another part of it, as it were. With this, it does actually need to fit within those bounds of about 20 by 30 centimeters or roughly a sheet of A4 paper. So quick tip, there's no positional camera on this, so you can't see in the software where you're actually burning it onto the material. And there's also no additional laser like the other one I tested had to try and position. So using the frame option in software is only useful on a very broad level, showing you roughly where you're going to go. For finer positional accuracy, I would suggest creating a new outer layer uh, that kind of goes around your design and then make that a 6,000 speed 1% burn. Turn off all the other layers, just burn that one, and it'll show you exactly where the outline is on the material without actually doing any damage to it. So I found that it cut through sort of thin MDF and plywood like butter, really. It's really neat, and I knocked up some lamp designs pretty easy and quickly. The Y-axis inversion wasn't an issue there because it's really just a pattern, so it doesn't matter if it's inverted. So it was really easy to blaze through sort of little boxes and things like that. If most of your projects will be working with this kind of thin MDF or plywood material, having that stronger laser really allows you to work through it quickly. Quicker, cleaner cut, so you get more done, of course, and better quality. Taking out the honeycomb tray for thicker material is quite annoying because you need to pull back uh, a latch at the front and you'll need a flathead screwdriver or a strong spatula to put that back in. Still, you won't need to do that often unless you're regularly switching materials like I've been just to test it. Um, but it does feel like the machine could have benefited from being just a tiny bit bigger. Or perhaps the filter can be removed so you can push it in from uh, behind a bit more, get a bit more maneuverability in there. The filter really starts to seem more like an afterthought the more I think about it. This sign was about the largest thing I could engrave due to the size limits, but that came out really well. That was literally just some scrap wood from a shelf I demolished, and I think it's really interesting how the different grains burn at a different rate. Perhaps it's more or less moisture in the wood. I also found that the power of this laser is more than enough to literally burn away stone. And having also just torn down a small awning outside the bedroom with a slate roof, I have plenty of scrap slate pieces lying around to play with. It didn't turn out as contrasted as I'd like, and it's really only sort of readable from a certain angle, but the very fact that I can etch away slate is going to open up a lot of possible projects, I think. It's something I will definitely be experimenting more with. I'm just really impressed that it can literally burn away stone. That said, I didn't have much luck at all with thicker MDF like this. The manual only mentions plywood, but using those settings, I barely made a dent. It seemed to engrave fine on the first cut, but when I went through to the second, I got some pretty big flames starting there, so I aborted the test out of safety concerns. There is actually a flame alarm on the side, um, but 
that was just more than I was comfortable with, so I stopped that test. Now, I didn't have any massive plywood to test with, but I did have lots of smaller plywood, so big brain time, I stuck them together with some double-sided tape just to see uh, really how far I could push this. So each layer here is 3.6 mil, so two and a bit would be eight millimeters is the maximum that the manual recommends. So I focused based on that and then did the one, the recommended one and two passes. So in this piece that I cut from the total, it would be about 14, 15 mil. So it should be able to easily cut uh, one or two layers away from it. And sure enough, it did one pass, easily made it through the first layer, two passes went through the second, three and four passes, uh, almost completely cut through a third layer, which would have been about 10 millimeters, but they weren't uh, quite through enough, as you can see there. Now the engraving at the top is a bit messy because I did it all under one operation. Uh, so it was focused in the middle of the wood rather than top. And uh, note, I forgot to invert the Y axis for this one. So the text is all back to front, upside down, uh, one of the two. So in practice, if you're cutting and engraving thick material, you should split your job into two, refocus to the top for the engraving and then to the middle of the material in order to cut. The machine does come with a helpful um, focusing block, which you can place underneath the laser, as well as some adjustment pieces, uh, depending on how thick the material is. Basically, the idea is that you want 50 millimeters between the middle of the material and the laser head. So you can use that to figure out roughly where the middle is. So I will add that I think eight millimeters thickness is pretty much a hard limit because beyond that, the focus of the laser just isn't going to be right. You'll never make it all the way through uh, like I did with this test. So is the Two Trees TS3 the laser engraver for you? I've mentioned some of the software quirks. Hopefully that's something I'll be able to figure out in time or they'll be able to issue an update for or better instructions. I imagine it's something that can be fixed easily in software if you just know how. The lack of a positional camera on an, engra on an enclosed machine is a big drawback, but then again, you're gonna be paying a lot more for those sort of features if you want that. And you can work around it with an outline layer like I mentioned. This is still a relatively budget level device and for what it is, the quality is superb and the features it offers are good if not a little basic. The biggest reason from a beginner standpoint to purchase this is the safety factor and comfort. It's not nice to have a house stink of burnt wood or even worse, potentially toxic acrylic. So having the exhaust fan and enclosure is probably the biggest factor for me. I've literally just stuck it out of the window here and it does absolutely wonders. You don't need to have a, a special seal or any modifications to your house or like that. Just put the pipe out the window. For this reason alone, I think this is the machine I'll be using more regularly uh, than any other. On the other hand, the enclosure does add its own limitations. Of course, while you can use an open design to burn larger projects just by moving the piece of material underneath it, there is an absolute limit to what will fit in this machine uh, without interfering with the axes movement. It's also a bit more awkward to work with thicker pieces of material because you may need to remove that useful honeycomb bed and then prop the material up. And then putting the honeycomb plate back again is quite awkward. It doesn't actually seem to fit. In fact, I do wonder if the filter was an afterthought and not part of the original design because it looks like it gets in the way a bit and you could probably do better if you were to remove it. For smaller projects that can fit on say an A4 sheet of paper, fantastic. But for, personally, I found the size to be quite limiting. For some of the projects, I really had to reduce the size of the signs or whatever it was in order to uh, not trigger the soft limits, which happen when the firmware detects the movement instructions would take the head outside of the working area. So in practice, the working area feels a little bit less than 20 by 30 centimeters because you end up being more cautious. If you're mostly going to be working with these sort of small pieces of MDF, then being able to rapidly get through those, pump them out without the stench of burnt wood and with 
really rather nice clean cuts from a more powerful laser. Uh, it is for sure fantastic. But for beginner users though, I think the software quirks might be a bit too annoying. Anyway, that's it from me. I hope I told you what you needed to know about the Two Trees TS3. Hit like if I did, or ask away in the comments if you have further questions, and I'll see if I can answer them. And be sure to subscribe to the channel for more reviews of all the coolest gadgets and tech. Until next time.